well, this is a, an important conversation to have. So into this conversation, I want to talk to you about the top 10 money saving tax tips for people with disabilities and their caregivers. So we are going to uh, actually uh, browse an entire body of research to give you the best elements you need to lower your taxes this tax season. Don't you go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's conversation, we want to talk about the top 10 money-saving tax tips for people with disabilities and their caregivers. Okay, According to a recent report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 60 million adults in the United States or one of every five, if you think about it, live with a disability. So whether they are looking, whether they are working or not, people with disabilities and their caregivers often have higher costs associated with medical care or daily living. So the current tax code makes some of this cost deductible. Okay, and as tax day approaches, we are going to go through some of the tax strategies and tax tips for people with disabilities and their caregivers. Number one. Let's talk about the ABLE accounts. So consider opening an ABLE account. This is very important because ABLE accounts are a relatively new savings option for people who become blind or disabled before the age of 26. 26. So the accounts work similarly to 529 college saving accounts, okay, in that money in the accounts grows tax-free and can be spent on eligible expenses with no tax implications. So this is really good. This is really good. So uh, one thing I want to say here is that but parents of people with disabilities have a, have a great way nowadays with the ABLE account to actually save money. So setting up an ABLE account is very easy. Okay, one thing you, you one thing you need to understand is that although the federal tax code allows for ABLE accounts, it's up to the states to actually set up and administer the programs, just as the states administer 529 programs. So when you contribute money to 529 plans, the state invests the money on your behalf. So unlike with a typical IRA or 401k, you cannot dictate how the money is invested outside of making choices as to how aggressive or conservative the money will be invested for you. Obviously, there are limits. So as of this year, any, in, any individual can contribute up to $15,000 a year to any ABLE account. Additionally, an ABLE account a designated beneficiary can contribute the lesser of the designated beneficiary's compensation for the tax year or the poverty line amount in the beneficiary's state of residence. Okay, so this is important. And, and we are talking about before the age, you got to be disabled or blind before age 26 to qualify. So when it, there are tax benefits of ABLE accounts, we have medical treatment, education, tutoring and job training, special needs, transportation assistive technology housing legal and uh, administrative fees okay so this is really important and there are some accounts that are counted as assets so a key feature of able account is that the first one hundred thousand dollars in an account is not treated as personal assets in the accounts beneficiary this is important because federal law generally bars individuals from receiving assistance such as medicaid housing aid and supplemental security social security income if they have more than two thousand dollars worth of financial assets. Let me now talk to you about disability credits. This is an important element to uh, take into account. So you want to systematically seek the disability credits. So people who receive stable disability income and are retired on permanent and total disability or who are age 65 or older may qualify for the credit for the elderly or the disabled on their own tax return. So the credit ranges between uh, ranges from 3750 to 7500, but there are income limits based on the filing status and the adjusted gross income, the AGI. Okay? So if you are under age 65, 
Claiming this credit also requires a physician's statement on an IRS form called Schedule R that certifies that you are permanently and totally disabled. So you also have credit for the elderly or the disabled. So to qualify for the credit, you must have been permanently and totally disabled before you retired. You must receive taxable disability income during the year. And you must be younger than your employer's mandatory retirement age before the beginning of the tax year. Those are really important, okay? And the thing here is that you have to complete Schedule R. I said this before, so it's really important. So if you meet IRS qualifications, you will need to complete Schedule R to claim your credit. And in Part 1 of Schedule R, you want to send, you want to answer the form questions actually with the relation to your age and disability status and your answers in that session determine what part of the form you will complete next if you are disabled you will you'll go on part two to verify your medical conditions and if you meet the age standard you can skip part two and go on three to figure out your credit okay so one thing i want to say is that to figure out your credit you want to enter there are certain steps you need to follow and they're not very complicated, but I'm not going to uh, spend too much time here on it. If you have any questions about that, because the form itself is self-explanatory, but if you need questions, if you need uh, the answers, further questions, I mean, if you have further questions, please, you can drop us uh, comments below. You can ask questions and our team will get back to you. Okay. But it's very important. It's very easy. And you just follow the, the, uh, the steps on the form to actually calculate your credit. And one thing I want to see here is that when you are ready to claim the credit, you want to transfer your, allo your allowable credit to Schedule 3 for Form 1040. Okay, so everything happens on Form 1040 because that's your, your individual tax return form. But you have to go through Schedule R to calculate the credit that you may qualify for. Let's talk about disabled dependent. So this is important. And uh, there are ways to claim a disabled person as a dependent. So one thing for sure, under most circumstances, you cannot claim a child as a dependent beyond age 19 or 24 if the child is a student, right? But a disabled child or other relative can be claimed as a dependent at any age, assuming you provide at least half of their support. So it's very important, 50%, at least 50%, okay? And the thing is that you can claim a disabled, you can claim a disabled child tax credit for your disabled family member. Now, the thing is that there are no specific credits available for disabled dependents. However, there is one special rule when it comes to claiming dependency exemption for disabled family members. There are two types of dependents, a qualifying child and a qualifying relative. So to claim a disabled family member as a qualifying child, the person must meet the same test to qualify as any other dependent. However, in the event that they are permanently and totally disabled, the age requirements does not does not apply anymore. Okay, so to claim your family member as a quali as a qualified relative, they must not have been they must not have provided more than half of their own support for the year. Again, the threshold is minimum fifty percent. So if your family member provided more than half half of their own support of the year, you cannot claim them as dependent. Okay, so this is really important to understand. And uh, one thing I also want to say here is that if you have to claim, let's say a disabled person on your taxes there are some limitations in terms of your income there are some limitations in terms of uh, the limits you can claim however once you actually meet the 50 percent at least 50 percent uh, threshold you are good to go and one thing i want to say here also is that uh, so what i was just talking about in terms of salary you know the 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 important condition of the disabled dependent test is salary so basically if um, if the dependent earns more than a certain threshold during the year, a certain amount during the year, then you cannot claim them as a dependent. So this year is around $5,000. Okay. So if your dependent earns more than $5,000 during the tax year, you're going to have to see if you qualify for the credit. This is important. Okay. And one thing I want to say here is that you need to understand that you, you, the laws change, the, the law changed all the time, but the most important element to think is, to remember is that disabled disabled credits and other tax benefits also have to do with the state in which you live okay every state has different rules and regulations let's talk about special needs 
So special needs are very important. So you can get credit if you have adopted a child with special needs, okay? So families that adopt a child who is a U.S. resident or a citizen whose state welfare agency deems them to have special needs will typically qualify for the maximum adoption credit of $13,500 $13, per child in the year the adoption is finalized. Okay? Income limits apply to this credit, but in adoptions involving a child with special needs, the adoptive parents can claim the maximum credit regardless of whether they incur qualified expenses totaling $13,500. So, when, you, when we talk about the tax benefits for families caring for special needs children, you have to think about you can deduct the cost of a special school or institution. Okay, so when we talk about special schools, we are talking about lodging, meals, transportation, incidental educational costs provided by the institution, cost of supervision, care, treatment, and training. Okay, this is really important to remember. You also have deduction for medical conferences and seminars. So both transportation and conference fees are deductible. You also have special diet foods. Okay, so generally only the cost of special diet food over and above the, the, the normal food is actually uh, deduct deductible. You have, you can also deduct prescribed vitamin therapy, hyperbaric, uh, hyperbaric, uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. You have uh, equestrian therapy. You have a lot of uh, therapies that actually are helpful to the special needs child. You can deduct those. You have medical travel and transportation. Okay. You have uh, one thing I want to say. You can also consider FSA healthcare plan if ineligible for medical expense deduction. Okay. You have to think about impairment related work expenses. So business deduction in lieu of a medical deduction for attending care services at place of employment. This is very important to remember that. And expanding definition of a qualifying child. Now, when we talk about qualifying child, the, the laws change, changes all the time. But you need to understand that uh, the qualifying child has to be your dependent for the entire year. Okay. And also, rules depend on the state where you live in. Okay. So, there, there is credit for special needs adoption expenses. Okay. And uh, there is also a 10% penalty exception for retirement plan and IRA distributions. So all in all, you see that there are a lot of uh, benefits that come with uh, special needs but when it comes with uh, caring for special needs relatives. Let's talk about dependent care. So here we are talking about you trying to obtain child and dependent care credit okay this is important so if you pay for a daycare or other care for a dependent while you work or look for work this credit can reduce your tax liability by up to three thousand dollars per dependent or a maximum of six thousand dollars for all dependents so usually this applies to children under the age of 13 but this is this is this is also applicable to individuals over the age of 13 who have special needs and so this credit can also be used to pay for adult daycare for a spouse or other dependent who is physically or mentally incapable of self-care. Okay. However, you must itemize your deductions to claim this credit. Okay. So this is important. So when we talk about the child and dependent care credit, you need to understand this is a tax break specifically for working people to help offset the, the, the cost associated with caring for a child or a dependent with disabilities. So this is a tax credit instead of a tax deduction. So a tax deduction simply reduces the amount of, of income that you must pay tax on, right? But the credit, however, directly reduces your taxes dollar for dollar. This is really good. So a lot of tax breaks have income limits and are not available at all to people with incomes above those limits. This is important, okay? In most years, you can claim the credit regardless of your income. It's important to remember and uh, so there, there are limits so you can claim as i said before a child under age 13 or younger your spouse if the person is unable to take care of himself or herself and any other person claims as a dependent on your return and uh, so you can claim the credit for money you paid for care as long as the person you paid was not one of the following people your spouse a parent of the, of the child being cared for anyone listed as dependent on your tax return or your own child age 18 or younger 
okay so, so this is important to really so those are considerations you need to think about and one thing i want to say here is that you you need to make sure so if you let's say uh, let's say if if somebody provided care to that child you must provide the name address and taxpayer identification number of the person and the taxpayer id number is either a social security number or an employer identification number so ask your care provider for the number I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome, my folks, to another session of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about tax tips and benefits and... and uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, tips and hacks for people who have disabilities and their caregivers let's talk now about medical expenses you can deduct medical expenses not a problem so if you itemize deductions and your family's medical and dental expenses in a calendar year surpass 10 percent of your agi this is a 7.5 percent if you or your spouse is age 65 or older then you can deduct the excess amounts this is not exclusive to people with special needs but in many cases, parents with special needs have a lot of out-of-pocket expenses, okay? So, deductible medical expenses may include unreimbursed expenses for hospital, stay, uh, hospital stays, prescription drugs, payments for a service animal, cost to attend a medical conference really, uh, that's associated with a disease that you or your dependent have, or transportation to medical conferences or doctor appointments. So this is really important. Now, the issue with this deduction is that it's only for the portion that exceeds that threshold. But if the individual has a relatively low income, it could be beneficial. That's for medical expense. Now we have another, you also have to think about the standard deduction. So when it comes to that, you want to opt for a higher standard deduction. So many of the, the deductions and credits that I've been uh, talking about in today's conversation, they require that you automize. But if you take the standard deduction, you may qualify for a higher deduction if you or your spouse is blind, for example. Okay, so the, the, for example, this year, the, the standard deduction for a single or married filing separately is around 8000 But that amount increases to 9000 if the filer is blind or over the age of 65. Now, the, uh, the, don't quote me on the amount because the, amount change, the amounts change all the time depending on the what Congress has set and what the IRS has set for this particular year. But the bottom line is that you, if you happen to have a legally blind relative in the family, the, their standard deduction are higher, okay? They're higher. So those is, this is something you need to think about if this applies to you or someone you know in your family. Let's talk about disability payments. This is important to remember also. So you need to find out if you need to declare disability payments. Remember that disability payments are not always taxable income, but it depends on the situation. So you may want to take a close look at what type of disability benefits are being received and determine whether or not they are subject to taxes. Okay, so you don't want to overpay taxes on income that's not actually subject to tax, right? So for instance, the IRS specifically states that Veterans Affairs disability benefits should not be included in gross income. However, if you receive long-term disability benefits from a plan that was paid for by your employer, the IRS states that those benefits can be taxable. Okay, So children receiving disability, disability benefits can also create confusion when filing returns. So one thing I want, to, I want you to say is that the... the, uh, the so what will happen here is that if you have to determine what benefits are taxable and which credits or deductions might be applicable to your situation, you have, you have to talk to a tax professional or, or you can uh, drop us comment. You can drop questions below because you have to analyze things on a case by case basis. Very important. So some disability payments are subject to income tax while others are not. So here are some common situations. So employer paid disability benefits those are taxable like regular wages okay 
disability insurance payments. So if you receive disability, if you receive benefits from a disability insurance policy, your tax liability depends on who paid the premiums for the policy. If your employer paid the premiums, then the benefits are taxable. If you pay the premiums using after tax money, your benefits are not taxable. You also have to think about social security disability. So social security disability benefits may or may not be taxable depending on how much other income you have and you or your spouse if you're married. Okay. So in general, one thing you need to understand is that if social security disability is your only source of income, your benefits are not taxable. Okay. So this is what it is. And, and uh, let's, when we talk about disability tax benefits, so as a person with, this, with a disability, you may qualify for certain tax deductions, income exclusions, and credits. Okay, so if you're legally blind, for instance, if you have gross income that is lower, if you have a physical or mental disability that limits your employment, if you are elderly or disabled, if you have medical expenses, if you work and had earned income that is low, so there are several scenarios for you. Let's actually talk about dependent child. This is important to kind of clarify. I talked about it briefly before, but now I just want to deep, go a little deeper. So one thing you need to understand here is that if your child is a minor and you provide, let's say, at least 50% of his support or her support, you can claim them as a dependent. Okay. And of course, this will give you a, a significant income tax exemption. Now, the thing I want to say here is that the IRS makes, uh, there are ways to calculate what qualifies for it over 50%. And the IRS is very adamant at making sure that taxpayers actually abide by laws in terms of proving that they indeed care for, they care for the dependent. Okay. I mean, there, there can be special concerns though. If your child has significant income himself, or if you are divorced and the deduction rules were negotiated as part of your divorce, or if your child does not live with you. So normally though, the deduction for a minor child, whether he has he or she has special needs or not, is straightforward. Now, one thing happened, when your child reaches age 19, the rules change. For students, the rules change at age 24. So you may still be able to deduct him or her as a dependent, provided that a few requirements are, are met. First, he or she must be permanently and totally disabled if he or she is receiving supplemental security income or social security disability benefits that he has uh, he or she has been determined to be disabled okay so generally speaking your dependent must also live with you for at least half of the year this is really important so again we go back to the 50 percent requirements okay so you must provide at least half of his support or her support and he or she cannot be claimed as a dependent own anybody else's return this is important so these rules apply to your child biological or adopted they also apply to your stepchild to your foster child to your grandchild to your brother to your sister to your niece to your nephew or a descendant of any of those people okay so there is actually another way your child can and uh, can actually um, qualify as your dependent and it does not require a finding of permanent and total disability so a qualifying relative can be a dependent even if the he or she does not live with you okay so but the thing here is that you have to provide at least half of his or her support this is very important let me give you other final key tips that you need to think about that could actually help you lower your taxes this year when we talk about people with the disabilities and uh, their caregivers Let's first talk about the disability tax credit. So if you are permanently and totally disabled and have taxable disability income, you may qualify for the federal tax credit for the elderly and disabled. Okay. And remember that this is really important that to mention. So this credit is only available if a doctor, a physician has certified that your disability prevents you from working and that your condition is expected to last more than a year or a result in your death. So the size of your credit depends on how much taxable dis dis disability income you had, as well as how much you received in non-taxable disability benefits. Very important. And let's talk about home modification. So if you make certain home improvements 
to accommodate a disability, you may be able to claim those costs as a medical expense deduction. So this includes such things that, as uh, adding a wheelchair ramp, a chair lift or grab bars, modifying hardware, electrical fixtures or railings, or widening doorways or aisles. So the improvement must be made solely to accommodate a disability and not for aesthetic reasons. Okay. So if the improvement increases the value of your home, you can deduct only the portion of the cost that exceeds the increase in value. Okay, so those are really, really important to, to remember. And one thing I also want to say here is that you need to have a clear idea of uh, how much this will cost you and how much you can deduct. Okay, and uh, so there, there are other uh, there are other benefits. You have gross income, for example, you know, certain disability related payments, veteran administration disability benefits and supplemental, secu uh, supplemental security income are excluded from gross income. You also have impairment related work expenses okay you have uh, medical expenses if you itemize your deductions you also have the earned income tax credit the eitc so we actually covered the eitc on another show but just to let you know that the eitc is available to disabled taxpayers as well as to the parents of a child with a disability so if you retired on disability Taxable benefits you receive under your employer's disability retirement plan are considered earned income until you reach minimum age, the minimum retirement age. Okay, very important. Thank you so much for your, your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just giving you, uh, we're just uh, going through the whole topic of tax tips for people with disabilities and their caregivers. So I spoke to you about ABLE accounts, disability credits, dis disabled dependent, special needs, dependent care, medical expenses, standard deduction, disability payments, dependent child, and other key tips. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>